there are at least four to five million lives that are saved as a result of being vaccinated, year in and year out. Immunization is one of the most effective, most impactful health interventions in all of human history, and I'd love to tell you why that is and about it. Tens of millions of people, in fact, over the course of human history, hundreds of millions of people died from smallpox. It was a dreaded disease. And in the late 1700s was an amazing breakthrough. A British physician, Jenner, noticed that milkmaids who had been infected, not from smallpox, but from a related virus called cowpox, they were pretty immune from getting smallpox. And so he used that observation to, in fact, immunize an eight-year-old boy, James Phipps, using the cowpox virus. And then weeks later, he exposed James Phipps, with of course the, the permission of his parents, um, to smallpox, and he didn't get sick from smallpox. And smallpox is a disease we don't have anymore, anywhere in the world. And the reason we don't have this disease is because of vaccination. Another disease that's really front and center, big spotlight uh, on trying to eradicate this disease, meaning wipe it off the face of the earth once and for all, just as we've done for smallpox, is polio. I think everybody knows what polio looks like. Paralysis of limbs, long life, disability. Many people die of polio as well. And this means vaccinating, for instance, in Pakistan, in India, in many other countries, huge campaigns that have vaccinated tens of millions of children in short periods of time. We're now at the point where polio has been reduced by um, over 99% compared with the way polio used to be before we had vaccines. We're so close to ending this. We're so close to the last few cases. We're so close to ending the transmission of this virus. I worked in a hospital in the country of Haiti, in the capital city, in Port-au-Prince. The pediatric ward in that hospital was full of children who had measles, who had diarrhea, who had meningitis, children who had tuberculosis, children who were born with tetanus. And about a third of children who were admitted to that pediatric ward died on a daily basis. And so many of the illnesses that children came in with were illnesses that were completely preventable with vaccination. It was a really important period for me in, in my training, in my life, to decide to really devote my career to making sure that vaccines were not only developed for diseases for which we didn't have them yet, but also, perhaps more importantly, that the vaccines that we already have are completely accessible, completely available, completely safe and effective for people in every part of the world, no matter what community you're born in. So we've all been living through what has been an enormously difficult couple of years, this pandemic COVID-19. And one of the things that uh, the world over, I think everybody knows is the incredible development in rapid time, in frankly unprecedented time of vaccines that prevent COVID disease. They work against uh, infection and transmission as well. One of the ways that vaccines have gotten into every country around the world is through the COVAX facility. And the COVAX facility is the mechanism to buy vaccines, um, which are, is happening on a billions of dose basis, and get them shipped to countries that need these vaccines that can't buy them on their own. There are 92 countries that are benefiting. And when we think about low-income countries, over 80% of the doses that are provided to low-income countries are coming through the COVAX facility. We vaccinate against diseases that are transmissible from person to person. Um, and that means that each of us presents some risk to someone else unless we're protecting ourselves through the use of vaccines. So I really think about vaccination as a social equity issue and a social justice issue. And there's nothing more overwhelming, there's nothing more tragic than a perfectly healthy child. 
who succumbs to an infection that was completely preventable.